Hey guys, so today's video is how you can do an, your own intercooler spray to do something similar to that. And uh, the goal of this intercooler spray is so you can power it separately from your windshield wipers. I've seen people who wire it directly to the switch inside the car behind the steering wheel. And I'm like, I don't want to spray down my windshield whenever I want to use an intercooler spray. So, and use the same pump so I ordered a different pump and a different switch so I can wire it and power it differently uh, yeah uh, the following is how to actually do it <laughs> so I've, uh, I've had the intercooler spray for a little bit over four or five months now and I was looking up ways that uh, you know you can order the ready-to-go kit and you know they were just some obnoxiously ridiculous price so I just ordered the bits and pieces myself and I put it together so I'm just gonna explain what I did uh, to so you can do that if you decide to do it right so what I did is I got the, this little windshield fluid pump that's a universal fit off of Amazon and uh, this is the uh, inlet side suction side of the pump and if you follow the line over here uh, back you can see I don't know if you can see uh, there's a T I put in a T over there so you can buy one of those T's like a set uh, on Amazon and two I'm gonna link everything below so that comes from the windshield fluid tank right and that feeds your uh, windshield wiper sprayers or nozzles but I just teed off there so I can have it individually powered and this, but suck from the same tank and it also gives me the same warning light when the tank is low for uh, the windshield fluid is low and you know you, I can just refill it um, and then the other side the discharge size I ordered another hose which connects which I ran it kind of uh, I ran it this way and along I uh, use zip ties to tie it off uh, tie it off through the fuel lines over here on top of the fuel lines and I made another connection here so I can disconnect it if I want to because uh, if I'm taking off the engine cover, right, it's uh, the nozzles are connected to the engine cover. I drilled holes and these nozzles kind of just, uh, they go through the hole and you can screw it in from the bottom and then reposition it however you want, right? And another thing I need to adjust is the actual nozzles themselves. So if you look, there's two sprayers on each nozzle and you can adjust each piece up and down so you can position however you want. Or maybe you can go a different route and get uh, different nozzles that you know have a different spray pattern because these are kind of linear spray and not like a mist. So uh, maybe I'll change them in the future so it'd be more misty. But anyways, that's the connection here. All right, and then uh, for the actual pump, <laughs> I used two self-tapping screws and just, you know, connected it to the frame here. I put in uh, some electrical tape on the bottom so it kind of, uh, you know, gets rid of some of the vibrational noise because it's kind of loud, surprisingly kind of loud uh, how it runs, but it works. Uh, and then the two wires, I got some uh, wiring myself, ran bl uh, black and red, connected to these wires and ran it this way. And then uh, let me put on the flashlight here uh, there is a grommet right there it's from the factory uh, it's a factory grommet so I'm just, I just made a hole in it and I ran those wires through the firewall into inside the cabin so this is what's going on inside the cabin <coughs> where, where is it somewhere here oh right there so it's kind of like behind the steering wheel column uh, runs over there and then I just ran it back to this switch that I ordered I want to recommend this switch it was kind of hard to fit I had to kind of grind off a little bit of uh, my trim here because the it, w it wouldn't stay up which was weird right and still like it's kind of you know doesn't stay up just right so if you can't order a different switch uh, but otherwise you know whenever I needed to it starts spraying. And it does the job. Uh, I mean, it, you can't really notice any temperature drops on like the, on the manifold temperature sensor from that I monitor from the access port. <laughs> you can 
uh, notice that if you're in a really hot temperatures and your manifold intake temperature is around 130 140 degrees or higher and if you let that spray you know you know before you take off you'll definitely see you know a 15 degree drop at least which I think is pretty good you know to drop 15 degrees in, on your intake temperature uh, and yeah you know I mean I didn't want to change I'm currently stage two I didn't want to change the intercooler so this kind of gives me more cooling whenever I need it in those hot summer months uh, yeah hit me up if you have any questions I'm gonna link all the parts that I needed to get this going um, and if you need any help getting this set up uh, just shoot, hit me up with a question and I'll answer it as best as I can take care